Hi everyone. Welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jennifer Gagnon with the Forest Landowner Education Program at Virginia Tech. And today I am joining you from my farm outside of Snowville in Montgomery County, Virginia. And more specifically, I am joining you from my pollinator garden in my backyard. And today I'm gonna to give you a demonstration on how to use the cut stump method to apply herbicides to unwanted vegetation. Today, the target of my herbicide application is this black walnut stump sprout. Now you may be wondering why I wanna get rid of a black walnut and that's, that's fair. Um, Cause black walnut is a good native species. It creates, it grows into a nice shade tree um, it can produce good lumber, and it produces nuts that are edible to both humans and wildlife. So it is a good tree. But you've also probably heard the saying that a weed is a plant growing in the wrong place. And that applies to this stump sprout here. Um, there are two reasons why I do not want a black walnut growing in the middle of my pollinator garden. First of all, as I said, it grows into a large shade tree. Most of the wildflowers in my pollinator garden uh, need full sunlight to grow. So having this creating shade is, is a no-go. Uh, second, black walnut is allelopathic. And that means it produces a chemical that acts like an herbicide. So in the case of black walnut, it produces a chemical called juglones. And juglones will prevent most other vegetation from growing anywhere in the root zone of this stump sprout. So I'd end up with a bare patch under the tree. Uh, so for those two reasons, I wanna get rid of this. Now you may also be wondering why I don't simply just cut down this stump sprout. It's really small, it's easy to cut. Well, as it turns out, I have actually cut down the stump sprout twice. Um, black walnut is a hardwood. Most of our hardwoods are what we call prolific sprouters. So they develop very extensive underground root systems. And when the top vegetation is removed, those root systems can provide a lot of nutrients and water um, to quickly create a bunch of sprouts. And so this black walnut, the stump will keep sprouting every year uh, for a very long time, which means I'd have to come out here every year to cut it back. And you know, one of the benefits to me of a pollinator garden is that they're extremely low maintenance. And if I have to come down out here every year and cut down stump sprouts, it doesn't really fall into the category of low maintenance for me. So I'm gonna use some herbicide to hopefully, hopefully get rid of it for good. So before I give you the demonstration on how to do this, we're gonna take a trip over to the barn real quick. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about herbicide selection. Uh, reading the herbicide label and what kind of information you can get from the label and the different pieces of equipment that you'll need to do cut stump herbicide application. Well, let's go. So the first step in this process is herbicide selection. And when you select your herbicide, you want to make sure that you read the label. Labels have lots of useful information on them. And if you've ever worked with a natural resources professional, you've heard us say the label is the law. So if you follow the instructions on the label carefully, you can apply herbicides efficiently and safely. So how do you figure out which herbicide to use on a specific type of vegetation? Well, you'll need to do a little research. There are plenty of publications on the internet from Extension, the Forest Service, and other state agencies that have um, information on what, what particular active ingredient is most efficient on different types of vegetation. Now let me mention here that the active ingredient is different than the name brand. The active ingredient is the actual chemical in the herbicide that, that will be effective on getting rid of the vegetation. So for example, Roundup is a name brand. Its active ingredient is glyphosate. Um, another name brand example is Arsenal and its active ingredient is Amazapir. So any of the publications that you find online will probably not give you the name brand of an herbicide, but they'll give you the active ingredient. And then you'll need to do some research to find out what herbicide name brands contain that active ingredient, which it's pretty simple to do. Now, in my case, herbicide selection was based solely on what we already had in the barn. So I found that we had this jug of Roundup Power Max. 
And so this is the chemical I decided I wanted to use. But of course, first I needed to make sure that it was legal, first to use this chemical in Virginia, second to use it on black walnut, and third to use it with the cut stump method of application. So I read the label. Now, the full labels are printed on the chemicals, um, but you may notice that the font is pretty small. I have a hard time reading this font. Fortunately, you can also look up the name brand of the chemical online and you can find all the labels for them there. So that's what I tend to do. It's much easier for me to read. So here's a close up of the label from Roundup Power Max. I've gone ahead and circled the section of the label that says that this chemical can be used with the cut stump method and that it can be used on nut trees, including black walnut. The label also tells me that um, I should apply it at a 50 to 100% concentration. And what that means is that I could use this chemical straight out of the jug and apply it to the stump and that would be legal. I went ahead and mixed up a 50% concentration. I'm really trying to minimize how much chemical I put out in my wildflower garden. Um, so this is 50% of the herbicide and 50% water. And I've labeled my applicator here. So Roundup Power Max, 50% concentration, um, July 2020. And labeling your container is important if you're gonna have anything left over because if I didn't label this and just stuck it in the barn and somebody else found it, they'd have no idea what it was. They wouldn't know how to use it or how to dispose of it properly. So this is really important. I also put a little bit of blue food coloring in here so I can see exactly where the herbicide is being applied. And this is pretty standard operating procedure with chemical application. This will allow you to get it very targeted. The last thing on the label um, is the personal protective equipment that's required for application. And so in the case of PowerMax, at a 50% concentration, it says that I need to have long sleeves, long pants, boots, socks, and also a pair of chemical resistant gloves made out of a waterproof material. And I'm gonna get those in just a second before I apply the chemical. And the final piece of equipment that I need for cut stump is something to cut the stump. So I just have this little hand saw. As you saw, the sprouts that I'm gonna be cutting down are very small, so this is a good tool for that. Uh, if you have larger stumps, that you want to cut or larger trees that you want to cut, you certainly can use an ax or a chainsaw. Uh, but in all instances, you want to cut the tree as close to the ground line as possible. All right, well, let's head back over to the wildflower garden and um, I'll do the demonstration. Okay, now we're back in the pollinator garden. And before I get to the demonstration, I just want to say a few more things about the cut stump herbicide application method. First of all, you want to apply the chemical to the stump right after you cut it. If you wait too long, the, the stump will form a callus and the herbicide won't be able to get down into the root system. So, you know, have your saw with you and have your chemical with you and apply them at the same time. Second, you also want to check weather conditions before doing this. Ideally, you want to apply the chemical when you have a window of at least six hours with no rain. It's overcast today, but the forecast says there's less than a 10% chance of rain, so I think we're pretty good to go. Finally, with larger stumps, it's good to know that you do not have to apply your herbicide to the entire cut surface of the stump. You only need to apply the herbicide around the outer edge of the stump because that's where the living tissue is in the tree. And with this method, you want to apply the herbicide to the living tissue. The living tissue will pull it down and kill the root system. So no need to waste uh, herbicide applying it to the entire cut stump surface area. Okay, well, I'm gonna lower the camera so you can see me make my, my cut and then we'll apply some herbicide. All right, so I had to cut a few of these stumps and clear away some of the vegetation so that you could see what I'm doing here. Here's a couple more black walnut stumps. So again, I'm gonna cut as close to the ground line as possible using this little hand saw, which is really efficient. I mean, this is so easy to use out here. Get these little ones here. And this one. All right. Oh, 
while I'm doing this, let me mention one other piece of personal protective equipment that I didn't mention is eye protection. When you're applying any kind of chemical, it's always a good idea to protect your eyes. Okay, so now it's time to apply the chemical to the stumps. So I've donned my chemical proof water resistant gloves and I, I went ahead and switched sprayer bottles. That last sprayer rig I had set up didn't spray. So I've made an adjustment. So we're just gonna go have this on a pretty low flow. I'm just gonna get that. Now, I said before that you don't have to cover the entire stump surface with the chemical, but in this case, these cut stump surfaces are so small that I'm really not using any extra chemical by covering them entirely. So there's one, here's another one, and that's it. Okay, well, if you're like me, that felt like a lot of buildup for a very short, quick demonstration. But I guess that's kind of the point with the cut stump application method. It's a really simple, quick, easy to use way to put herbicide out on unwanted vegetation. And it's very targeted. It's really limited to just what you don't want if you apply it carefully. I do have a few closing points that I would like to make. One, I was using a glyphosate based product and I know some folks are trying to switch to different active ingredients in the herbicides that they use. Let me just caution you to make sure that you read the label. One of the benefits of glyphosate is that it doesn't move in the soil. So if I dripped a couple of extra drops of the herbicide on the soil around those cut stumps, it's not gonna move up into the root systems of adjoining wanted vegetation. Not all active ingredients behave that way. Some are very mobile in the soil. So let me just show you this picture here. This picture from the Virginia Department of Forestry is from a landowner who switched to an imazapir-based herbicide to get rid of the weeds in his driveway. Unfortunately, the chemical moved into the soil and the roots of the adjoining desirable vegetation picked up the chemical and he has a lot of mortality now. And then just as a quick review of the cut stump method, you need to select an appropriate herbicide, make sure that it's, it's uh, legal to use it in your state, that it's legal to use it for cut stump, that it's legal to use it on the vegetation you wanna put it on. Um, make sure that you have all of your gear with you when you go out to cut down the vegetation. So you wanna cut the stump and get the herbicide on it quickly. And I use a spray bottle to apply the herbicide, but some people use a, a paintbrush, some people use a sponge, it's really up to you. Just be sure that you store and you dispose of whatever you use according to the directions on the label. So the point of today was to do some work in my pollinator garden. And so I wanna wrap this video up just showing you some scenes of a well-established pollinator garden that I have in my yard. It is two years old. Um, it's not completely native wildflowers. I used a southeastern wildflower mix to seed it in, but I really reclaimed an old hillside that was just covered with weeds. It was an area that we couldn't mow. It's an area right next to the house. We wanted it to look nice. Um, and so I have to say, um, I'm gonna brag on myself, this pollinator garden is one of the most beautiful things I've ever had a hand in creating, and I'm, I'm really just thrilled with it. It's really quite amazing and once I got it established, which really was just removing the vegetation, raking up the soil, putting the seeds in, stepping on the seeds, all I have to do now is in late March I come in here and remove all the dead vegetation and then I just let it go. Thank you so much for spending 15 minutes in my yard with me this week. And I hope you join us next Friday at noon when Virginia Cooperative Extension's Adam Downing will be teaching you about other methods of herbicide application. Have a great weekend.